I'd like you to memorize these ones. These ones are pretty easy, up through 144. The only three you really, really got to work on is 13, 14, and 15 squared. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Here's why you're going to memorize them. We can simplify. I hope you're still paying attention because this is the part where you're going to learn something right now. We can simplify these radicals by using these numbers, and here's how you do it. There's one nice property about square roots, and that is that if you write it as something times something, as a product, you can split up that product. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at these numbers and find the biggest number out of, only out of this list, only out of this list, that divides that number. So think about 48. Find the biggest number from this list that divides that number. Okay, six doesn't count. Six not on, is not on the list. Eight doesn't count. Eight's not on that list. Thirty-six doesn't divide that number. Oh, four. I need you to divide into that number. Sixteen. Twelve. Uh, is twelve on the list? No. Sixteen. Sixteen does. Four does. Four does. Right. But that's not the biggest one. I'm looking for the biggest one. The biggest one on this list is sixteen. Do you agree? Yes. In fact, here's what you're gonna do. You can say, oh, well, this is the same thing as the square root of 16 times what gives you 48? 3. Three. Hey, are these two things the same, the square root of 48 and the square root of 16 times 3? Mm -hmm. Is this still equal to 48? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Here's what you can do. Okay, here's the power of these square roots. Whenever you've written this as something times something else as a product, you can now split this up. Watch carefully. This is the same thing as the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. That's a true statement. That's called the product rule for uh, radicals. It's a true statement which all time. Now, I need you to focus here real quick. Do you see why we picked the number 16? Can you take the square root of 16? Yeah. yeah. If I had picked 6 and 8, can you take the square root of 6? No. Can you take the square root of 8? No. That wouldn't help you at all. But if you pick one of these numbers, you're able to take the square root of at least that part of it. Now, focus on the board here real quick. Can you take the square root of 16? Sure. That's how much? Four. Can you take the square root of 3? No. No. So you're going to leave that one. Here's what you do. Whatever you can take the square root of, you do, and you leave the rest. And you leave the rest. Instead of having the square root of 48, we simplify the radicand. We get 16 root 3. That's how you say that. Say 16 root 3 for me. And what it means is 16 times the square root of 3. What you've done is you've made the inside of your radical look a little bit better and a whole lot smaller. That's easier to deal with later on because you'll have to use these things within problems later. This is going to be a lot nicer to work with than that one. You guys ready to do one on your own? Okay, once you try it, it's, it's not easy when you start. It, you will get the hang of it pretty quickly. But try this on this problem. What I want you to do, do not say it out loud. Everyone needs to think about this. I need you to look at this list. This is the only list that's going to work for you, okay? I need you to find a number on this list that goes into that one. Find a number on that list that goes into that one. Don't say it out loud. Okay, so this is only other example we're going to do, so hopefully you nailed this thing. Have you found a number that divides 54 that's on this list? Yes. What is it? Okay, and so you're going to write this as 9 times something. What's, what is it? 9 times what? 6. Tell you what, you've got to write the 9 first. You've got to write the number you can take the square root of first. So this is going to be 9 times 6, not 6 times 9, you got to do 9 times 6. You've got to do 16 times 3. You with me on that? Uh -huh. Now, what allows you to, to simplify this is the fact that you can break this up now. This is the square root of 9 times the square root of 6. 
This number, you really don't care what it is, as long as you have one number you can take the square root of. What's the square root of 9? Three. Three. So instead of 9, we're going to write out 3. three. And the square root of 6, can you do anything with that? No. You just can write the square root of 6. 3 root 6. 3 root 6, and that's it. That's as simple, simple as you can make that square root. Raise your hand feel okay with this, this idea. Good deal. Good deal. Now, you remember this, you remember this guy? Yeah. Well, say that word for me again. Pythagorean. Good. I watched the video when I said that to you the first time yesterday, when I said the Korean thing, and I took up. You got, you're like, what? It's funny. It's funny. Like dead silence and then some laughter. It was pretty, pretty good. It made me feel completely math dorky on that day. That's all right. Yeah, this guy Pythagoras and his, his followers, I told you a whole story last time, they worked with this, this shape called a right triangle. And what made a right triangle different than every other triangle? Right angle. Right angle. Right angle. That's right. Are right angles important in our lives? You see right angles all the time. I mean, the only reason why this building is held up is because of right angles. You know, if that wall right there wasn't a right angle, like, you guys probably all be dead. Because it'd be all, and then we'd all <laughs> die. You know, that wouldn't be good. You know, right angles hold buildings up, and, and triangles hold buildings up. Uh, triangles are a very structurally sound figure. Anybody who does construction would, would know that they, they do bracing for roofs, uh, trusses, and they're all triangles. Okay, so we're going to work with this shape called a right triangle. That's clearly a triangle, or at least I've tried to draw a triangle. And what we're going to assume is that, because I'm not the best artist, this angle right here is 90 degrees. And how you show that, how you'll see that on any paper, is that symbol right there. That symbol says that angle is 90 degrees. So a little definition for you, if you're talking about a right triangle, What it means is a triangle with one 90 degree angle. Another word for this, if you want a special word, fancy word you can impress all your friends with, which I know you're not going to do, but anyway. Uh, another way to say 90 degrees is the word perpendicular. Can you say perpendicular? perpendicular. Have you ever heard of that word before? Yes. Yes. These walls are perpendicular to the floor at 90 degrees. That's what that means. Now, a right triangle is a special triangle, and we have special names for the sides. We don't just call them sides. With a right triangle, we have three special, actually two special names. We use one of them twice. We call these two sides that are adjacent, say adjacent. adjacent. That means right next door. So like your neighbor is adjacent to your house. It's touched like right next to your house. This side and this side are called adjacent to that 90 degree angle. They're touching the 90 degree angle. Do you get what adjacent means? It means right next to it. Is this side adjacent to this 90 degree angle? No, it's, it's across from it. It's opposite of that. So the sides that are adjacent to that 90 degree angle, we call those legs. So this has how many legs? Two. How many legs do you have? Two. This is just like you. It's got two legs. <clears throat> two legs. Unless one of you has one leg. That would, sorry. Okay. I think everyone's got two legs in here. So leg and a leg. And this long side, the longest side, the side that's opposite the 90 degree angle, we call that, it's got a weird, really special name, we call that the hypotenuse. Can you say high? Hi. Hot. Hot. Inus. Hypotenuse. Hi papoose. No, not hi papoose. We have no papooses. Hi pot and oose. Hypotenuse. <laughs> Looks like hypotenuse. Like the pots in use, but no. It's not really what's happening there. Uh, the hypotenuse is how you say that word. <sighs> Hypotenuse is defined as the longest side of a right triangle. Are you all okay with the shape, the right triangle? 
Right triangle's got, what, what's special about it again? It's a 90 degree angle. 90 degree angle, okay, perpendicular, that's great. It's got, what, what are its sides called? How many legs? Two. And the longest side is the? Hypotenuse. Say, say hypotenuse one more time. Hypotenuse. Is that a new word for you? Yes. It's all right, all right. Now, here is the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem says if you take, here it is, if you take the length of one of the legs, length of one of the legs, and you square it, do we know how to square numbers? Yeah. Sure. Plus the length of the other leg squared. Not the leg plus the leg, but the, le the square of those legs. These guys figured out that this will always equal the length of the hypotenuse squared. It's kind of an amazing thing when you think about it. No matter what right triangle you have, no matter what, if you add up the squares of these legs, it will equal the square of that hypotenuse. So this number squared plus this number squared equals this number squared. Is that kind of cool? Yeah. It's not this plus this equals that. You can't do that. A lot of people, when they're first learning this, they go, oh, well, why don't we just take off the squares? Duh. Well, we can't. You can't remove squares like that. These are exponents. You can't just cross them out. It doesn't happen like that. It's not something you can divide out of your equation. This stays the way it is the whole time. You cannot change this. So it's not this plus this equals this. It's this squared plus this squared equals that squared. Are you guys okay with that so far? Now, you're probably wondering why in the world are we going to use this? What's this used for? Well, I'll tell you what. If you, if you ever go on a construction site, people use this stuff without even knowing they really use it. Uh, in order to check square on a building, you can check it very quickly to make sure your, your wall is straight up. Because what you would do is you'd apply the Pythagorean theorem. If it doesn't work, it, so you'd measure up, like I'd measure up a certain amount on that wall, a certain amount on this floor, I'd measure the distance with a string, and if it doesn't make the Pythagorean theorem, I know my, my wall is not square, it's not, not straight up and down, it's off a little bit. Now they have carpenter's squares which do that for just a little bit. You know, which would tell you the first couple feet, but what if you want to be more accurate than that? The bigger the wall, the more accurate you need to be, right? Well, I hope so, because I don't want a gigantic wall falling down on me. Uh, so you'd measure all the way up, all the way up, take that angle, and then you figure out whether you're, you actually did your job right or not. Now, there are different ways to square up a building. I did construction for a couple years, and there, there's different ways to square a building, but that's one way you can check for it. Three, four, five. What was that? 3, 4, 5. Sure, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 5, 12, 13. There's a 10, 24, 26. There's a lot of different Pythagorean triples that work according to the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to learn some right now. Okay, this isn't really drawn to scale, but we're going to go for it anyway. Firstly, is it a triangle? No. Is it a right triangle? Yes. Sure. Well, actually, but it's not a triangle yet. Hang on. There. <laughs> okay, that's triangle. Got it. Is it a right triangle? Yes. Yeah. Well, let you know it's a right triangle. Okay. Now, I need you to identify what I've given you. Have I given you the hypotenuse up here? No. Have I given you a leg? Yeah. How many legs? Two. Two. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to apply the Pythagorean theorem to this triangle, and what it lets you do is solve for missing sides. For instance, if you were trying to build a roof, okay, let's, let's pretend you're building a roof, and you need your section of roofing to